So the Dean Henderson's learned yesterday then. Tell us what that means to you to have him in the building for the rest of the season. I think you can see by the response um, of the supporters um, how much of a big sign in and it just adds to the belief and um, and what people hopefully, you know, he's not short of confidence, is he? Um, so yeah, it's not a bad one, is it? Okay, how do you assess his first months at the club then? No, listen, Dino is a very confident lad um, and without a shadow of a doubt, got tremendous natural ability. But the big thing for me, what shines out is his work rate and his effort to be better and always wanting to be better. Um, sticks out like a sore for me. He's, he's, he's going to have a, a big future in the game. Without a show of doubt, and uh, I'm pleased this football club has gave him the opportunity and Man United in terms of giving us permission um, to allow him to make his prof professional <coughs> debut with this football club. Okay, and in terms of potential, how far do you see him? Do you see him going? I'll tell you the stars, and I'll tell you what, I'm not one to disagree with him. Honestly, with the belief he's got, um, he can go as far as he wants, as far as I'm concerned. What I've seen so far. I'm talking about the person. The ability is there for everybody to see, but I I keep going back to how he's on the training ground in terms of his work rate and wanting to be better. Um, and when you've got that desire and drive and ambition, you can't put a limit on it or you can't put a ceiling on it. Let them go and flourish and blossom and, and, and go as far as they can. Okay, he's the next in a, in a line of signs you've made this January so far. Any more plan? Yeah, hopefully Andy Warrington. <laughs> no, and I don't mind him being serious. Not as a goalkeeper, but you know, for me, my staff's important. Um, and I think through all this, I think one person has been missed out massively, and that's Andy Warrington in terms of identifying um, Dino and bringing him in. Um, so a huge credit to him. And the first day I walked into this building, he's been different class. So another important business for us is, is to make sure we have Andy Warrington with us, you know, his, his contract's up at the end of the season and, and I want to extend that. Um, and like I said, he's in, integral to what we want to do moving forward. And like I said, he's, he goes above and beyond um, of what he's supposed to do. Um, and like I said, I, for me, yeah, January windows and it all be about players. But for me, my staff is just as important and he's someone I want to move forward with with this football club. OK, there's an offer on the table to keep him here then. This is first breaking news. Yeah. So you, everyone's hearing it first, Andy. <laughs> this is the first time Andy's heard it as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant then. Um, any in terms of on the field as well, are you are you looking, have you got a number on the amount of signings that you think the fans should maybe be expecting before Tuesday? Um, I'm hopeful of getting a couple more in. And like I said, it would be it'd be areas where we we feel we haven't got. And like I said, um, we're just short on that physicality and just short on that, on that balance in terms of left footers. So um, hopefully we can get two across the line. If we don't, we don't. You know, I think supporters and the club have got to be delighted the way the window's gone so far. Uh, I think there's been good news every week um, up till now. We're into the last week now. Um, I believe it's 11 o'clock on Tuesday. But I'll be at home with my mum because I need to see my mum. Um, so on Tuesday, I'll be at home with her. Okay, that was something I was going to ask you about. Are you what, not, not your mum? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you looking forward to taking part in in transfer deadline day? Because it's the first time you've you've been part of it. That honestly, Tuesday I'm going home to see my mum. Because anyone who does business on the last day, unless they've been trying to do it all the way through the window, I get that. But certainly, um, hopefully. Our business is done, and like I said, I can spend some quality time with my mum because um, I need that. Okay, and have you enjoyed the, the transfer window? Love enjoyed that, that side of it? I remember you made a comment a couple of weeks ago about being like championship manager. Do you, do you kind of get that buzz from making I've every minute of it, and, and I think hopefully the supporters have as well. I generally I, I get that feeling that they've been excited by the window and how proactive we've been. Um, and like I said, they can take a lot of satisfaction out of this window. Mm -hmm. I certainly have in terms of the support the board have given me and then hopefully they've seen how I've worked and hopefully again 
Um, I've made an impression on them. But like I said, like Dino said, the supporters don't realise how massive part they play in this football club. It's a great selling point, our support. And um, for any players coming to this football club to have that back in, you know, listen, at the end of the day, to have that encouragement, it does, it, 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 it can only make you better. And like I said, I've found it myself personally, the support I've had, um, and all the players I've brought in, I've, I've spoke the same, I've spread the gospel of Grimsby Town, that we've got some huge followers and you, and you all love it. And, and certainly every single one of them are, have been feeling that love. Okay. But, can I throw a butt in? We will be judged when it doesn't go quite so well. You'll get loads of fans, but what I call supporters, supporters are there when there's not a lot to sell, there's not a lot to sing about, get behind, and they're still there in their numbers. And like I said, we've got the majority, if not most, their supporters at this football club. Because like I said, this season has been a celebration. They haven't had a lot to cheer about at home in terms of results, but it seems we've turned that corner and they've been there in their numbers and they've been in their numbers away from home. So we've really got one and truly true supporters because um, they've got behind the team, win, lose or draw. Okay, and the following in large numbers to Stevenage the weekend as well. Um, what, do you, what do you make of the opposition you've got up against you in 48 hours time? Listen, I'm more excited about can we repeat and can we follow on our performance from Saturday as well as the result. Um, first and foremost, <coughs> it will be the result. But, you know, we're at this moment in time, these last six, seven games, I think we've hit promotion form in terms of points return. Um, what we need to do now to keep that consistency is not go away from what's got us those results, but also can we get now a consistency in our performance? Um, because if you reach certain performance levels generally over the course of a season, those results will become consistent. So we're getting that, but we're always mindful of we're not where we want to be yet. And again, going back to Adino, always wants to be better. I want to be better. I always want this team to be better. Okay, finally, just a quick one on injuries. What's the, any, any fresh injuries? What's the situation? Uh, just James Berwick will be out for the weekend and he'll be out for a couple of weeks now, which is a shame. Um, but he's been for a scan and it, um, he'll be out a few weeks longer than expected. So, yeah, just James Berwick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> any players going out in the pipeline? Listen, like, like anything, there's, you know, with players coming in, um, ultimately, there, you know, there will be players going out. Um, you know, and for me is, like I said, we, we've got round now and everybody knows where they stand. Um, and listen, we, we, we've got to be fair and we've got to be honest with players and I believe we've done that and we've given players the opportunity. Because don't forget, I'm, I've inherited the squad, so we've got players here on two-year contracts as well as bringing players in as well. You know, you've got to, you've got to balance personal in terms of you still need to do you still need to make improvements in the summer so it's important you know those who are in those last years in the last year of their contract I po possibly can't if they're not regulars if they're not regulars in this period since we've come in then we've got to give them an opportunity because I can't guarantee mm -hmm. there's going to be a contract um, at the end of the season that's got nothing to do with them personally it's the fact it's the way the squad is in terms of players on the contracts they are the players we've brought in we've still got to have enough movement in the summer to go and improve so if they've got an opportunity now to go and earn themselves longer term contracts because I can't guarantee anything at this moment in time or to go out and get games I think it's it's being fair to them and being fair to the football club as well Is there anything imminent there then? I'm sure there will be, and like I said, all our business, like we said, comings in, we'll try and keep it in house, um, and goings out, we'll, we'll keep it, you know, we'll keep it in house until you break it, Dale. Any news on Omar? Has there any, any, been any more offers for him? No, not one. Well, one which we told the player first about, um, and has been documented. Um, and that's it. Obviously, uh, last weekend saw Jamie make his, his full debut and he did very well. Um, it, it is, he's now been here a week and had a full week of training as a professional footballer. How's he settled into life here? 
Yeah, it, it's Jamie can be happy with his happy with his debut in terms of the circumstances behind it as well. Hardly any football come the turn of the year, um, so he can be happy. But like we want to create an environment where we want to be better, um, and Jamie's only got only going to get better. And like I said, yes, it's his first week in full time football, and he knows he has to be better. Of course, yeah, and obviously you mentioned last week that the uh, the competition between James and Dean in terms of the quality of players that you've uh, got available to you, it's, um, it's something you want all over the pitch. Have you seen that in training then with the, the options you've got outfield as well now? I think if we want to be successful, we've got to have competition. There's a recipe for success and that's not just only the, the playing squad. The recipe for success is how your clubs run at board level and it's got to go hand in hand. It's a business ultimately. Um, and as a football team at the end of the week, what supporters want to come out and watch, but you've got to get the balance right for success. But talking about the squad and the ingredients for success, you have to have balance, you have to have competition, um, and you need to be flexible um, and have options available to you in terms of shape, systems, etc. etc. So we're a work in progress and we're building towards that. I wouldn't say build, we've made massive strides towards where we want to be. Of course, yeah, and obviously now just one point off the playoff places. Uh, like you say, you're a work in progress, but how nice is it to be within touching distance of that and, and, and looking upwards as well? I think we've always either been, we've certainly been around it, and certainly we've been in it since I've been here. Um, and we want to be in and around it come the business end of the season, but my job as the manager as well is, is to bring realism to it as well. And certainly, you know, there's a lot of belief going around the town and there was a lot of talk about playoffs and yes I'm, I'm ambitious and I'm driven and I want success and ultimately success means promotion whether it be this season the season after or the, or the season after that there's a certain period you want to bring success to a football club and like I said returning to the football league that, that took far too long six years far too long um, but again, going back to the success, it's not just about the players on the pitch, it's at board level, it's, support, it's everything. So we want to bring success and there's a period in which we want to bring it in. Um, but there's a lot of people believing it can be this season. If it is, great. But if it isn't, it shouldn't be looked upon as disappointment. Because ultimately, I think everybody, the key for me is, is making sure this football club becomes an established football league club again. And when I mean established, I mean never has it have to look over its shoulder and look the other way. It's always looking up and certainly we're looking up at this moment in time um, and long may that continue.